Maybe Mr. Maslangul needs to unmute. unmute. If he's connected. he's connected. Okay, okay. Uh, 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 good morning, good morning, morning once more. Uh, this, uh, is this is Dr. Dr. Dungwa uh, from the uh, from Houghton, Houghton Challenge. We will be, we will be starting. We will be starting. Uh, uh, we are just we are establishing, establishing uh, uh, um, um, the, the uh, uh, way, way is, is uh, Dr. Dr. Uh, Antoine uh, Antoine Manipani. Manipani. As soon as he joins, he will be able, able to start, to start uh, 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 the sessions. We are all welcome. All welcome. Thank, you Thank you very much for, 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 for attending. For attending. Right in your, right your hands. And it's connected to streaming is a but connect connection seems very, very poor. Can you see him on your side? Side. Hi, my then you sorry, sorry, as D A Doctor Anthony. I can see he is connected, connected but his connection is bad. Hi Mike. Hi Mike. Yes sir. Yes sir. I've sent I've you his numbers, his numbers on the side. On the side. Can you just, Can you just call him, yes, call him yes. and, and establish, establish what's happening. Okay, okay, call him, call him now.
Yes, now yes, I'm now I'm connect. connect. Uh, yeah, 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 now I have, now un I have unmuted. unmuted. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Let me let me let me yes, yes. I've moved, moved from the from the Wi-Fi. Wi 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 yes, yes, but my. My face, my face now, now can, now can appear, here on, here the on the video. I think I you can think able you can able to see me. See me. We can hear you. We can hear you. Yes. 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 I hear, I hear that, that the body is now. now, and, uh, and uh, all, the all the participants can, can, can see me. See me. Uh, uh, good good uh, uh, morning. morning. Uh, uh, my, my name is Dr. Dr. Anthony, Anthony Swarelomalabani. Uh, uh, I'm told I'll be the facilitator for, uh, for uh, this session, session today. today. I'm, I'm a researcher, researcher here at the GPL, how the potential literature. Um, I'm also, also a, scholar a scholar of public, of public administration, administration or public, or public affairs, affairs and governance. governance, and, uh, and uh, what they call the because I work mostly with, with, with the Swan University of Technology, Technology uh, the Department, Department of, of uh, uh, Public uh, Affairs, public affairs uh, uh, doing, doing uh, uh, subjects subject related, related to, to local, local uh, government, government and public and policy, policy uh, uh, the, 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 TUT there. there. So, so hopefully, hopefully we will be able, able to, to work together, together, together uh, with, uh, the, with the participants, participants as well as, as, well as the, the panel panelists and the audience, and the audience at large, at large. Uh, throughout, yeah, throughout this session. session. So I've so seen, seen that, that our time, our time is, uh, is uh, two, hours. two hours. We are going to take, going to take two, hours two hours in this session. This session. So, so our first, our first item, item without, without waste, of waste of time, time is to is open, to open with, with prayer, uh, prayer and, and uh, meditation. meditation. So, so we'll, we'll give, give uh, 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 all of all us, of us just just uh, uh, five five minutes of a moment, of, a moment of, silence. of silence. And uh, and those, those who can, who can pray, to pray, you can you can pray, pray in silence as well. as well. Let's 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 do let's that. Do that. No, th no, thank you, thank you, thank you very, very much. much. Uh, my time, my time sees the five minutes of prayer is over. over. Let's hope Let's I got it right. right. With that, With that. Um, um, today's, today's seminar, seminar it's, it's all about, all about the, the importance, importance of student participation, participation in local, local government, government uh, uh, elections. elections. So, so I'll, I'll, try I'll try to introduce, introduce uh, the purpose, purpose of the seminar. Of the seminar. In brief, in brief, I won't take, I won't take uh, a long time. time. So in so brief, brief, the purpose, the purpose of, the of the seminar is about, is about elections, elections and our and participation, participation as, as uh, young people, young people among, among the young people, young people as well. As well. Uh, we, have uh, we have noticed that, that, that uh, elections, elections after, after elections, elections uh, questions, uh, questions of particular, particular interest arise. arise. More, more, more importantly, importantly Relating, relating to the, to the overall, overall participation, participation of, of different, different groups, especially, especially uh, uh, young, young, people. young people. However, uh, the, however questions the questions don't end, end there. there. They go to the extent, extent of, of uh, uh, questioning, questioning the, democracy the democracy that we that have, we have in, South in South Africa, the one that one we are, really, really we are proud, of proud of each and every each day. day. As we As all we know what democracy is, 
dictionary, dictionary definition of democracy, of democracy talks about, talks about uh, democracy, uh, democracy is about, about the people, people which I think is the one that we are familiar, familiar about, about where in where some, some in the the edition to go to the extent, extent of saying that it's about the people, the people, 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 then now, then now the, the textbook uh, definition, definition of democracy, of democracy is more, more relevant to, to today's, today's uh, seminar, seminar that we are having. It talks, it talks about, about or it takes, or it the, takes form the form of, of uh, 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 representation as well as, well as, as participatory, participatory uh, uh, democracy. democracy. These, These two, two, which are, which are representations as well as, well as participatory, participatory uh, uh, well, well explained, explained or defined, or defined, defined or limited, limited uh, uh, using, using institutions, institutions that, that have, have uh, civic, civic obligations, obligations to enrich democracy. democracy. And among, and among such, such institutions, institutions is the, is the uh, uh, Houghton, uh, Houghton Provincial, provincial uh, legislature, legislature, which I think, which I think is the cause of this, of this, this, is this is the, the cause of this session together with the IEC. And then and, uh, the TUT. TUT. So, so the, legislature the legislature is a, is a body, body that, that is the representative of, of uh, uh, the, people. the people. It is, it is selected uh, by, the uh, by the people of Houghton to represent, to represent uh, their, uh, their interest. interest. And, it and it has different, different mandates. mandates. Some of, some, some of us are familiar, familiar with some, with some of the, the mandates, mandates of the legislature, such as oversight, oversight uh, law uh, lawmaking, because it's known, it's known as the body that of that law. law, and then and cooperative, cooperative governments, governments, that means that working together, together, together with uh, other uh, spheres of government, such as, such as uh, 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 municipalities, and then, and then uh, of, more of more particular interest, that, which is relevant, relevant to today's session, today's session is... Public participation. While while I try, try to, to uh, browse, browse some, some literature, literature on, on uh, uh, participation vis-a-vis -vis 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 elections, uh, uh, there is there is an acknowledgement of, of citizen participation, participation that citizen, citizen participation, participation is directly, directly, directly correlated, correlated to. to uh, uh, Citizen, citizen power, power meaning, the, meaning power the power of citizens, of citizens to, decide. to decide or to make, or to make decisions on who and who represent them. them. And, and one, one way of doing that is through, through uh, uh, elections. elections. Especially, Especially this, this to, to the upcoming, the upcoming elections. elections. Which are, which are local government, government elections, elections, which, which aimed, aimed at giving, at giving us, as young, as people, young people, the opportunity, opportunity to, elect to elect the representatives who will, who will be representing us in our local, local communities, communities directly. directly. However, However other, than, other than the opportunities, opportunities that these elections, elections give us, us uh, every, uh, every uh, four or five, four or five years, years in which, in which we, we have, have the power, power to vote or the power, or the power to elect, elect our, our representatives. representatives. There is always, always a, lingering a lingering question, question that always, that always arises. arises, more especially, more especially related, related to, to vote turn out, out, turn out, which is which a subject, is a subject of, contention, of contention, more especially, more especially coming from, from uh, uh, the 2019 20, election, wherein the voter turned out was uh, uh, amongst uh, the lowest. And central to the issue of voter turnout is the issue of youth participation, wherein the question of youth empathy is always been raised to say yes, people, young people seems to be disinterested to take part during elections or overall in electoral democracy. However, when one was perusing uh, different literature with regard to youth participation, youth empathy, and electoral democracy, studies, however, acknowledges that young people are, are interested in uh, electoral democracy. 
or overall democratic processes. Because young people do engage in issues of democracy, do join po political parties, more especially in institutions of higher learning where they are based, they do join political parties, they do participate in the activities of political parties. They do engage in debates through social medias. They do participate in political activities such as the FISMAS Hall and many others that are related to that. However, the studies, they conclude to say, but why young people are not participating in voting while they're interested in other electoral processes or democratic processes, but why not voting? That's the question that we should be asking ourselves while we deliberate on this session today. Why not voting? More importantly, given that statistics allude to 25%, 21% of uh, eligible voters that are just not interested even to register their names on the voters' roll so that they can able to vote during elections. And those 21% represent young, young people. Perhaps we should take comfort of what the IEC just announced uh, more recently with regard to the 400,000 young people who have uh, uh, registered for the first time to vote during the upcoming uh, local government election. So with that, uh, this actually in a nutshell just explains what is the purpose of today's session, which I do think uh, the brief uh, summary that I just gave does explain what the purpose is. And going forward, we'll be able to be in a position to all of us in more especially with the panelists to contribute to this discussion going forward. Then without a, a waste of time, because we only have uh, two hours and my job or my work is only to be the facilitator of this session, I will hand over to uh, Dr. Teddy Teddy. Uh, from TUT uh, to welcome us in this session. In this session, thank you very much, Doctor. Over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Doctor Malapil. Doctor Malapani, am I audible enough, colleagues? Am I audible? Yes you, are. yes, you are. Yes, you are. You are audible. You are catching. Thank you so me. much. But you are audible now. So, I will try because the position of uh, I'm working from the office today is such that it's very, very bad. My laptop is not working, but I'm working from a cell phone. Uh, on that tone, it is indeed a great honor once more that the Houghton Provincial Legislature deemed it fit again to enhance uh, TUT and yourself as an institution, as a strategic partner. Strategic partnership, drive bonuses of development. Strategic partnerships engage robustly to build the youth. Strategic partnerships enhance stakeholder relations. On that tone, I would like to say to the youth, a right of citizens to choose credible leaders, that is the people we follow. It's a right to what we say, democracy. 
I wish to embark on the issue to say that as an institution of higher learning, when we embark on very empowering projects that empower the youth, we firstly espouse democracy in, in the Republic of South Africa. We encourage students again during these very tough times. These are the times we can't talk about uh, the economy without doing anything for ourselves. And on that tone, I'm saying we have a challenge that is airborne, that affects our health. And thus, we don't know the time when this pandemic will finally fizzle. But again, I'm saying to my students, to our beloved leaders in the making, which are the students, I wish to encourage our students to vaccinate. When you vaccinate, you are boosting your immune system. When you vaccinate, you know you have far greater chances of not being hospitalized. So this is an opportunity for our youth to say that the government is working entirely, you know, uh, day in and day out to make opportunities for all the citizens. And our government is very open to say to our youth, we want you to get closer to us. The pandemic is here and together as, as stakeholders, because you are leaders in the making, we can enrich democracy whilst we embark again on capacitating students because the Houghton legislature is making opportunities for our students to be capacitated, to be trained, to be enlightened so that they become credible leaders in the future. We are losing you, Doc. We are losing you, Doc. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Doc, for uh, the message of uh, welcome. Indeed, we feel uh, welcome. The participants as well, they can attest that indeed we are welcome and ready to uh, take uh, this program uh, forward. And then, uh, um, without waste of time, let me allow. Um, a representative from the IEC who will be uh, taking us through the electoral uh, process or election voting procedures on how do we go about, more especially as young people who are mostly uh, first time uh, voters. Uh, Mr. Donald Matlango. Over to you. Good morning, colleagues. Am I audible? Ah. Good morning. Yes, you are. You are audible. 
Okay, um, Donald Masangu, uh, outreach officer from the IEC. Uh, hours before elections, what we do is to make sure that we provide civic and voter education uh, throughout communities. Basically, what we do is to um, educate people. Uh, on voting procedures, the importance of voting, and how it's, it's, it's important as, as, as a voter, as a potential voter, to have your voice in elections. Um, I would start with um, registration. Prior all uh, prior elections, we, we do what we call um, registration drive, or we also have actually a registration weekend. That um, weekend it's done, or that registration period is done to make sure that everyone who wants to participate in elections is given a chance to come and register uh, so that and when there's elections, they're able to vote. We had our registration weekend on the 18th, or 18th and the 19th uh, of September, which was last month. So now, usually when we, we have registration, we are guided by the Electoral Act, where it says that now you need to be a, a South African citizen uh, at the age of 16 years and be in position of your ID, smart card, or temporary identification certificate. And now you need to have your address because now when we come to local government elections, we vote for what councillors and PR. So what councillors are basically councillors that um, would help you within that what you live in. For an example, you would be living in what 25 in Soshanguve. So it means that on registration, you need to register on that ward because that ward, that ward counselor would be able to assist you uh, throughout that uh, five year period with whatever that you would need. So after that, I would go to elections. Prior elections, what we would do also would make sure that we provide civic and voter education throughout all communications that we we have so that we at the end of the day we reach as much people as possible mostly youth because most of youth might be that they are not informed by a lot of things especially when it comes to elections they might not be informed of why is it important to 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 register why is it important to 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 vote uh, for many reasons, because without um, people being educated, the other things, when they happen, they don't see a value of them, like elections. For someone who doesn't understand or who doesn't see the importance of voting, would not see value of voting. So it's, it's within uh, our jurisdictions, the IEC, to make sure that everyone who votes, everyone who, who's, who's registered is aware uh, of all the processes that we should be doing. And it is also our job also to make sure that everyone understands what, what happens in a voting station and how do we make sure that we have lo uh, less special, uh, less ballot papers and how do we make sure that people who are disabled, who can't go to voting stations uh, how do they apply for special votes and and so now firstly now for anybody to be able to vote in elections of 1 november the first thing that has to do they can't see me okay okay let me do this Am I audible? Yeah, yes, you are audible. You are audible. Because okay. I'm told I can't be seen. Let me do this. Okay. 
Okay. Now, as we spoke about um, registration weekend, as that now, for us to be able to vote, we need to register. Secondly, um, as we know that a, as a voter, all the, when you vote, all uh, so your vote must be secret, even when we on special votes. So for a youth of, uh, of today, it's important to determine that what are the challenges they face today in which public representatives are best placed to address them. However, if they don't vote, they must be rest assured that they, that the other will vote and they might be left uh, with a government that is not um, not responsive to their needs. So it's important that each and everyone uh, understand. So during voting, we have what we call um, voters' role. A voter's role is where we maintain each, each and every one, each and every voter's details. So when a person goes to um, a voting station on the 1st of November, what will happen now, everyone will be required to bring his or her uh, um, ID or temporary identification certificate whereby now they are able to, to vote because it's one of our requirements when you have to vote. So if you if a person has to vote, it has to be on a verified on a verified section. And there's actually our voter soul is divided into two a verified section and a rejected section. A rejected section will, will con Will, will consist of those who are, who are underage. As you remember that when we do registration weekend, we allow people who are 16 years and older, but on the, on the elections, those who are 16 years are not going to be able to vote. But now the importance of them to be included is that now we teach young people at a young age, the importance of participating. So now we are preparing them when we we say they can come and register at the 16 years we are preparing them so that now when 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 the time is right they are able to 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 vote at the age of 18. so mostly on 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 when when we still on registration what we do now um during civic and voter education we make sure that Whoever who's registered, maybe a person might have registered in Mamilodi or Eastern Cape, but then now this person has a new uh, residential details. During our civic and voter education, what we do, we encourage people, we let them know uh, that now because of you have moved from a certain place, now you live in this place, then now you are going to be able to to, to be given a chance so that you're able to register and when the day of elections come uh, and they are able to, to vote on their ordinary residence now. So people would normally ask that now, uh, will blind people be able to register um, during um, registration and will they able to be able to vote during elections? Now, visually impaired and blind people will be assisted, actually normally be assisted to register and then they later apply. They are encouraged to apply for special votes, to vote in secret and with dignity. So now visually impaired people and blind people can also use the what we call in the IEC during election, the universal ballot template to vote in secret and with dignity. The, the IEC now, what it does is that it will go an extra mile to facilitate equitable participation of what we call the visually impaired people, the VIPs in voting process and the right to uh, secret uh, ballot. Now, usually during these times of, e of elections, people get called and texted by political parties. Now, again, this is one of the questions people would ask right now. Does IEC give them contacts 
in terms of uh, um, for them to to campaign. So now what IEC does is that it provides political parties with what we call um, voters' role. The political parties are able to come and request voters' role. Now that has information of voters, so that information is strictly used for elections, not other than that. So now I'm going to take you through the voting process. I just wanted to give you the background of why we have to register and so that we participate. Now people would ask a question because we under COVID-19 now, a lot of people would worry about their safety uh, on the voting station. And and now people might worry about the safety during voter registration, during I mean elections now because we have passed um, voter registration weekend. So we have what we call um, COVID-19 protocols in the in the station. So now what our officials does is that also our officer will will be masked up and ready to help to to vote. Now each and every time when a voter comes, we we'll wipe the voting station surfaces with. Um, the 70 percent alcohol disinfect before and after when each and every voter comes to the voting station. Then we'll sanitize your hands and pants with liquid sanitizer when you enter and leave the voting station. We'll make sure that we always maintain a social distancing. You also need to play your part as a, as a potential voter. Make sure that whenever you come, in the station to, 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 to vote. You have your mask and you maintain your, 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 your central distance. So not, now what you have to do when you come on a voting station, you must wear a mask to cover your nose and mouth at all times. We are not going to assist anyone without a mask. Now, when we are, while we are on the queue, you must keep a 1.5 meter distance between you and voters. Then now an NGO official will sanitize your hands when you enter and leave the voting station, then speak up when and where COVID protocols are not being observed. So as a potential vote or as a vote actually, what you have to do your role also is to speak up whenever you feel like um, they do not um, observe, our, our, officials, our officials do not observe their protocol, uh, protocols uh, in trade. Uh, um, they don't adhere to the protocols. You need to speak out, speak out. So what you need to be uh, carrying on the day of uh, elections, you need to have your ID. Because your ID now, it's a proof. It will be a proof that this person who is voting is that this person who, who's a carrier of the ID is that person. So without um, your ID or temporary identification certificate or smart card, you are not going to be able to, to vote. One would want to come with a passport is not permitted to vote. So those are three documents that we, we require as per electoral legislature to when you come to, 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 to vote. Thank you. Th thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Matango, for uh, the background that you give us, as well as the uh, procedures that we need to follow as young people when we are going to when we are going to vote. Uh, the most important thing that I have uh, captured while Tate Matlangu has given us uh, the background with regard to the importance of us uh, voting and the procedures is the one of we have the right to vote. However, when we don't vote, it means we are giving the right away to those who are going to vote to decide on our behalf. Meaning that as young people, we should 
start taking this right of voting uh, very seriously because it has uh, direct uh, implications to our future and the interests and needs that we want uh, the government of the day to, to deliver to us. So without a uh, waste of time, let me uh, allow our participants or our uh, panelists to introduce themselves. I will start with uh, Zandile Magubani. Uh, Zandile Magubani. Hi. We, we will be happy to see you as well. We can just see you and then you'll switch off the video afterward. Okay. Okay, please hold on. Um, sorry, sorry. You, you can just show us your face and then introduce yourself and then mute the video. It's fine and continue with the microphone if you are not comfortable with the video. Okay, just now. I'm still giving permission to this thing. Okay, can you see me? Okay. Visible. You are visible, but if you are not comfortable going forward, you can switch it off. Okay, will do. Um, hi, everyone. I am Zandile Makobane. I'm currently studying, I'm a student at TUT. I'm studying my second year in journalism. I am also a volunteer at TUT's um, SULD. And I'm also a blogger, a content writer, a YouTuber, and I am awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the brief uh, 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 introduction. I like it that you are awesome. It means we are going to hear more from you. And then uh, uh, Ayanda Munisi, you can introduce yourself, sir. Okay, I think, uh, can you hear me? Doc? Can you see, see and hear me? Yes, you are visible and we can hear you. Okay, no, thank you very much. Uh, this has been a very wonderful session since from the beginning. And my name is Ayanda Munisi. I'm from obviously TUT and I'm studying uh, software development under the faculty of ICT. I'm the former chairman. In fact, uh, my term ended not long ago, chairman of the ICT faculty. And, you know, I also believe in the spirit of Thomas Sankara and the ideology and the politics that he had. And therefore, I truly believe that it is very important for us to continue to respect the right of voting because it's a very constitutional right. Thank you very much, Program Director. Thank you very much. We are looking forward to hear more about uh, the philosophy and ideology of uh, Thomas Sakar on how uh, the youth should go about to participate in uh, democratic processes. Uh, let's allow uh, Oprecious Makhani to introduce yourself. Um, okay, thank you, Dr. Marakani. You can just switch on the uh, video for now, and then if you're not comfortable going forward, you'll switch it off. Can you see me? I can't see you now. We can't see you. Okay, please hold on. Yeah, but if it gives it gives you a problem, you can just leave it now. Then you will uh, switch it on at the time you are uh, presenting. Yeah, it doesn't allow me to to switch on. Okay. okay. Um, my name is Precious Mathani from TUT Social Media Campus. I am a second year student studying public affairs, local government. Um, I'm also a peer facilitator of the top programs. And uh, as GLD, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, happy to hear that there are some of my students here. Uh, 
looking forward to hear more from you. And uh, let's allow um, Wandile Mukwena to introduce yourself. Uh, hi, I hope you can see me. Hi. We can able to see you and you are audible. Okay, thank you. Um, this is Wandile Mukwena, uh, a student of TUT in Soshanguve. Uh, I'm currently studying local government management at uh, level three. So I'm a chairperson of public management and I'm a DJ. Yeah. Thank you. No, thank you very much. We are also looking forward to hear more from you. Uh, with that, uh, let's not waste uh, time. We'll start with our first uh, panelist, uh, just to uh, make a presentation on the importance of uh, uh, participating in local government elections. Our first presenter, Wandile, you can mute. Oh, yeah, Wandile, you can mute. Yeah, so our first panelist, the floor is yours. Just briefly uh, tell us about the importance of uh, as a student participating in uh, our local government elections. Over to you, our first presenter, the first panelist to introduce okay. you. Yeah. Um, so for me, the question of whether students should participate in local government elections, um, I would say it is more important. And I don't feel it, it is very important for students to participate in local government elections. And I have a few reasons why. So firstly, um, the normal slogan, the usual slogan that is commonly used during this time of elections is your vote is your power or your vote is your voice. And I, I just feel like that is all a, a phase of democracy. Fine, it's to promote democracy when they say your vote is your power and you have a choice and it's your opportunity to participate, um, as to actively participate as a citizen in your country. But I feel it's just a phase because yes, you vote and it's, it's your voice, fine, and that's where it ends. But then the rest, the decisions are taken by whoever is governing. Um, I'll make an example just so that uh, you understand what I'm trying to say. It's like a relationship between a parent and a child. The child has a say, but at the end of the day, the parent will take the final decision. So in this case, I feel it's just the same way that um, in this context, we as students, yes, we have a say in a vote and in wishing who you'd want to put in um, parliament or government or local government to represent us, but that's where it ends. At the end of the day, whoever is governing will take the decision. And uh, my second reason would be um, around the philosophy of purpose, purposeful stupidity. So what this is, it's, it's a study that was conducted in 1994 by the CIA, which was then called the OSS. And the study showed the strategies used to indirectly or vaguely sabotage a society from within. And so what the study shows is the, the, the repetition of behavior throughout government and throughout the years till 1940, 1944. And the, these strategies, sorry, these rep repetitive behaviors would be the ruling system will make frequent long speeches. All the matters that are raised or most matters that are referred to a committee or most matters that are that are raised are always referred to a committee that no uh, will refer to the this matter to whoever for further study and consideration and thirdly they bring up irrelevant issues almost all the time throughout the speeches um, they also refer back to issues that they said that they about in the previous meeting and ask for questions on whether and how to develop this and that might so this is a study, sorry, this is a study that was conducted in 1944, and it's now 2021. And when you look at the things that I've just mentioned, it's all the same things that are happening. Every time there's a speech, it's the same thing that's repeated, it's the same matters, it's just an endless cycle. So with what we're experiencing today, I feel it's not relevant and it's not important for us 
as a youth or as students to participate in voting because it's the same thing over and over again. Imagine a study conduct conducted in 1944 and it's now 2021 and it's the same things happening. Um, yeah. And my third reason would be, um, it's also a common thing that they like to say the future is in our hands as the youth and as students. And so basically that means that we are the future. But when you have a look at government personnel, 90% of them are well-aged, well-mature elders. And in that context then, like where are young people? So because there are no young people in amongst governing, or let's say there's like 10% of young people amongst governing personnel, that basically means there is no future. Because if we are the future then in government, then it means that we, there is no future because we are not present in government. So how do you encourage the youth and how do you encourage students to participate in something they're not included in? And this goes back to the point that I made earlier on that it's all about your vote is your voice and that's where it ends. The decisions will be taken by whoever is in power. Yeah. And my last point to this is I think it's not important for the youth to participate in local government elections because of the way things are and it's and voting will make a difference really because even in our communities, the lives that we live, the shortcomings of the people who um, we have placed in power to rule us and to help us, we see them almost every day. And year after year, we continue voting, even our elders continue voting, but these shortcomings, they just keep growing and growing year after year. So that little hope, okay, let me not say little, but that hope that we keep on holding on to, that no, maybe things will change, maybe things will change the following year or the next election year. It, it diminishes slowly but surely. And just to give a practical example of the, the shortcomings that continuously happen over and over again, um, I have a friend in Mamelodi and we were talking the other day. And so he was, um, he was telling me that they were having a water crisis issue. It started this year in January. But before that, in Mamelodi, they were having, um, I think they would experience about two months with no uh, garbage disposal services. They have street lights, but they had it for like two days. They worked for two days, and after that, they just did not work at all. The local hospitals are not elder friendly because most of the time it's elders who go to local hospitals um, for their chronic medication. They walk, they he said that the elders that, that he knows wake up at like 4 a.m. to go and walk to the hospital. They get there, they queue outside and not inside. And the reason for that is no, that public, that particular hospital does not allow people inside, which is confusing. So, okay, where is the local councillor to address these issues? That's another problem. They do not know the councillor. They do not even know their ward. So with these issues that keep on growing and growing and growing, the hope that we hold on to, it just diminishes. And that just questions the relevance and importance of actually voting that, yes, your voice is heard, but is action, is action really taken? It's it's not. Uh, are you done? Uh, Mengubani, are you done? Yes, I am. Okay. Before I let you go, because you have raised so many uh, critical uh, points. Yes. We mentioned uh, of instead of voting, giving us power as the voters, who takes yes. power away from us. Not really take power away from us. It just it just gives us the satisfaction that okay, you spoke. For example, if as I made the example that it's sort of like a parent-child relationship. If a child is whining and crying about something just for peace, the parent will listen to the child and be like, okay, what do you want to say? and the child talks, after that, okay, fine, the parent will take their decision. So it's not a matter of them taking away power from us, but it's them giving the illusion that we actually have the power in our hands. And I think um, I think when you, when you were speaking earlier on and introducing yourself, you said something about we participate, the youth participates more in other political activities, and you made an example of like things like the Fees Must, must Fall March and stuff like that. I think 
it makes sense for us to participate in stuff like that because we actively see what we are doing. We see the results and we see our efforts and we see that, okay, this is working. We feel the power that we, that is it we have and the right for us to practice that power. We see it, but with voting, it's just an illusion. So do you think, do you think that has to do with uh, maybe lacking faith on uh, our representatives, let's say, for example, the political parties or the individuals that we're supposed to vote for? That's the last one, and then you can conclude. Okay. I wouldn't say it's a lacking of faith. The faith is there, whether in a political party or whether in um, somebody that we want to elect to have them represent us. The faith is there. Hence, some youth will still continue voting. Hence, some elders will also continue voting because the faith is there. But like I said, year after year, yes, we continue voting. But year after year, uh, the problem is still, still are there. The problems still exist. And the funny thing about that is it's the same problems the very same problems that will be addressed, youth unemployment, um, poor service delivery, uh, gender-based violence, it's the very same problems, but they are still there. And it's more problems adding on to that. So the faith is there, but all I'm saying, and the hope is there, all I'm saying is that it's diminishing slowly but surely. And that just questions it, the fact, would see, is it really relevant to vote? Is it really important if matters like this that have been, that have been discussed over and over again, it still exists on top of other things. No, thank you, thank you very much. You have said a mouthful. Uh, let's let's allow our uh, next panelist, Ayanda Munisi, uh, the importance of voting or the importance of uh, participating in local government elections. Uh, what uh, Umi Singubani raised is that it is not important and the reasons or the basis were uh, provided. Uh, in addition to the question on the importance of participating in local government elections, do you think uh, the political uh, system that we are operating in has to do with that? Uh, Ayanda Munisi, over to you. One delay you have to mute. OK. Uh, thank you very much, Program Director. And let me also send my humble greetings to you, Dr. Steady the IEC representative who just spoke to us not long ago. And uh, what I will do in these few minutes that I have, uh, program director, is to provide, I believe, clarity to most of the people that are watching us and also greeting, greetings to them, to our viewers. Uh, provide clarity in terms of, number one, I'm just going to explain the importance of the young people participating in the local government elections. And then number two, give you the reasons of why uh, young people are not participating. And then number three, just to give you the solutions. And then, uh, but before that, I would like to just quickly start on what the latter speaker has indicated, which I believe it's it's of uh, a danger. And I will tell you why it's, it's a danger, because she said something about um, having people to go to the street and exercise their rights of protesting and marching uh, with the lives of this must, must fall. I believe that protesting and marching it's a constitu constitutional right, of course. But let's not put our focus mainly on that when we want to express ourselves. Because the, is, the constitution on its own provides various ways of how we can express ourselves. And we must be smart in a way that when we express ourselves, we check at the context. Why do I say that? The same fees must fall. It did not only result in us uh, having free education, but it, it, it resulted in some of our brothers and sisters passing away. It, it resulted in some of uh, in some of the families, you know, crying because of they have lost the breadwinner. Therefore, those are the implications which are very much dangerous in us take, looking at the situation in with only one eye and not looking at other various or alternatives in order for us to raise our concerns. But let me start by indicating program director. You know, Franz Fanon once indicated that each generation must, out of its relative obscurity, discover its mission, fulfill it, or betray it. Therefore, the reason why I'm saying that, it's because of the young people have not found they are, in fact, this generation has not found its, its, its mission you know, has not, is not even willing to fulfill it. And in fact, how can they be conscious enough to fulfill something that they have not found? 
which is one of the most crucial issues that you are dealing with at this point. Now, if you find a mission, it's either you fulfill it or you betray you you betrayed let's look in 1994 the young people they found their mission which which is to make sure that um you know they are able to receive the quality of education which other students were receiving especially those white students at that time and they did whatever that they did and they made sure that they fulfill it that's why at this point we have you know quality of education which is equivalent to all of those white people that are in the private schools. Now, let's talk about this generation. We firstly need to find our mission and fulfill it. And this leads, uh, leads me to, to come into the question of why, in fact, um, the students are, are not participating in this. Number one, in just me preparing for, for this session, I realized that there's no longer confidence anymore in the leadership that may be elected. You know, young people are suffering from, from, from a disease, which a disease of, of being separated in terms of the participation of the economy, the participation in terms of power at the top. A practical example, and you, you, you can even see by, uh, through the parliament, people that are there are old people who are taking decisions for the young people that are down. At the, uh, that are down and the decisions that they take they at some point they do not even involve the young people when you talk about job opportunities unemployment we expect these people to come to the ground and engage with us understand us what is it that we are talking about i have a problem at this point with the government giving young people money 350 every month now if you check the quality of of or the value of that money and how it's going to be used it tell you or it gives you an indication that a person who did not work for for that money will continue to demand it because of we have shown them that it's easy to get it money in south africa why do i say that because of initially there was no engagement with the young people get their ideas what do they think about unemployment and how can they involve themselves and how can they assist therefore those are the issues that the young people are dealing with and it makes them not to have confidence anymore in the leadership that we have at this point and then number two obviously i've, I've indicated in fact that no opportunity is being an opportunity to participate in the economy Young people are not there. There are only few young people that are there. Therefore, it gives you a, and therefore they don't give you that room to participate. Then it simply means that you have to find your own self and do something. Let's say, for example, you have your NYTA. NYTA, it is there. But if you check, even, even though there's a platform that is created for young people to thrive, that same platform does not serve the interest of the young people, whereby you see issues of corruption emerging in the same platform. Therefore, the whole confidence, it goes down. Then you ask yourself, why do I have to go and vote if such things are still continuing? And, and, and also another thing is the focus. The focus that is meant to reach out to, vo to voters does not, you know, address the issues of the of the young people most of the time and you said something program director to say the political structures or the political parties what in, in fact they, what whatever that they are doing is it not affecting i believe that it is it is affecting why do i say that because of their ideas or ideologies at some there's only one political party which I believe at this point is addressing the issues of the young people. That's why most of the young people are running or running towards that party because of what it is able to address. It is able to channel the issues. Therefore, if you want to target the young people, use ways or systems that will be able to speak to their challenges, that will be able to speak to whatever that they are crying about. At this point, we know the issues which the young people are crying about, opportunities, we are talking about unemployment, which is one of the key issues that the country is dealing with. And if you have such issues, you need people who are sharp, who will be able to raise these issues. And most importantly to the young people, I want to raise you know, a point to say that it is very important for us to, 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 to participate in the local government elections. Why do I say that? If you want to see change, the, one of the easiest way for us to uh, push for change it is through the, the elections. Look, if you, you are not happy with a certain political party, as young people, we are being given the privilege and opportunity to gather together, 
And if we see the old people are not giving us attention, let's gather together. Let's form something which will be able to address our issues. If you want to see change, let's take power from the people that are, are deciding on our behalf and bring it and bring the power to us and decide for ourselves. Therefore, if we distance ourselves from, from voting and participating, we are creating a room of disaster. The same problems that we see now will continue, will continue to continue forever and ever. Amen. Because of what we are not participating. Therefore, elections, they have consequences. Now, if I decide not to vote, my neighbor or my friend votes. It simply means that he, he has voted on my behalf, in fact, because of I will suffer uh, the consequences of, of, of whatever, um, uh, 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 of whatever, how do I put it, of whatever that has transpired pertaining to the, vo to, to the vote. Therefore, I need to take, you know, this right which I've been given because it's a constitutional right and everyone is given that opportunity. And democracy needs us. In order for democracy to thrive, it needs us. Let me give you a practical example to those who understand and read the Bible. There was a point where Moses had to leave. I'll give, you, I'll give you one minute just to conclude. Okay, thank you, Mark. Thank you very much. There was a point where Moses liberated the people, but then you need Joshua to take them to the promised land. We are the Joshua's of this generation. If we do not take that opportunity, we might find ourselves in trouble. Therefore, I would like to propose that the IC must collaborate, you know, with the influencers, uh, the artists, in order to make sure that they push for the awareness to the young people. Young people, most of, most of them, if they can be influenced, they can fall in the right direction. And let's push for online elections. TUT just posted online elections not long ago, and the process was key. There were no long queues. Therefore, if you deal with such issues, we will all be in the right, in the right direction. Therefore, voting is an opportunity for change. All of us must participate and you know take this constitutional right and run with it in order to bring a generation of Thomas, of the likes of Thomas Sankar. Thank you very much for being there. Thank you very much. You have said a mouthful and you have raised uh, critical points, more importantly with regard to young people having not found their mission yet. And then you mentioned something profound with regard to uh, uh, the socioeconomic rights superseding uh, the right to vote. So is that what you were saying? And how do we ensure that the right to vote becomes one of the main uh, rights? Are you still there? Yes, program director, I, I didn't get your- Yes, I, I heard you mentioning that uh, because of the high youth unemployment, which I think it's around uh, over, around 70 something percent. Yes. And then uh, young people are not interested in voting. Then my question was, are you saying that uh, the socioeconomic rights supersedes or it's over the right to vote? That's why young people are not interested in voting. Yes, uh, that's what I am basically saying. And the reason why I say that is because of, I have a friend who said to me, um, I, I'm, I'm, I've been looking for a job. I've been going up and down and nothing is happening. Now they want my vote. What is it that they are going to do for me? The perspective that the young people have at this point is that when these people get to power, and that's the narrative that has been created, they look out for their own, not for the community or the, or the society as a whole. Therefore, it's only the friends and the families, and that in, it affects the young people on the ground. And if we don't address those issues, we'll find ourselves having, you know, young people not participating, only old people participating in the elections. How do you say Okay, no, it's very clear. And then how do you suggest we give the power back to young people when young people are not interested even to join political parties or participate in political processes? Look, I, I, I think program director, it's not really an, an easy journey, you know, because this has to do with convincing the mind of the, the minds of the young people. But what I believe that we can do, start to have changed. The moment you start to promise me, if I give you my vote, you promise me something, can I see that change? And remember, let's work with numbers. Numbers speak louder than words and louder than promises. We need to see figures in terms of the jobs that have been created, in terms of the industries that have been brought up. 
because I see a lot of political parties saying that we'll continue to uh, bring back the manufacturer, the manufacturing companies, you know, which have died long time ago. We need those things. And we, when you come to my community, let's say in social movie, in Ward 37 or Ward 16, I we want to see a number, quite a, a quite a lot of people being injected into the plan that you already came with. We want to see the changes. So if we can see those changes, then that can convince the young people to go forward and vote. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, I think you have concluded it well. Uh, let's allow uh, Oprecious uh, Matlani, uh, Oprecious Matlani just to take us through uh, the importance of voting and also touch on the issue of saying young people do want to vote, but, which I think is a big but, uh, that has been uh, presented by the two latter, speak latter speakers. So over to you, uh, Precious. Matani? Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Malapani. Um, um, I agree to a greater extent that oh, is oh, so, so, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Uh, our, our audience, uh, uh, you are allowed to raise uh, questions through the chat. You can send questions through the chat. Those who are connected directly will also be allowed just to raise uh, one or two questions. So however, those who are not connected directly, you can just send your question through the chat. You can continue, Precious. Okay, as I was saying, I agree to a greater extent that it is important for students to participate in local government elections. Um, it's important for all of us to make our voice heard as a student who wants change. It is important for other people my age to realize the importance of voting. We as young adults account for 50% of voting population, yet only 19% of 18 to 25 year old voted in the 2016 presidential elections. And we, we can do better and remember every vote count, whether you think so or not, your vote count. Um, today, we are, we are more devised than ever as young adults. We have the ability to challenge and question each party on what their agenda is. When it comes down to voting, we want someone who will present, who will represent the needs of, of us uh, in their agenda. Um, I, I, I don't... I don't only think that voting is a right that we are given, but I also believe it is it is a responsibility. We 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 are setting um we are setting the the example and vision of the future with the people we are electing. We better shape the future of of our democracy for our kids and generation to follow by voting. Many of of the uh, um initiative that um that you are voting on effect not just us but our environment because one of the one of the key political uh, um, topics in this generation um is is environmental issues and i strongly believe that um the participation of students in local government is critical because it is the belief that involvement in student government increases a student knowledge on how politics works and increase likelihood of, of participation mm -hmm. in in politics as I, in politics as, as an adult. Um, also participation in extracurricular activity as a student government helps students gain the leadership skill involved in, in influencing group decisions. It allows students to participate um, being part of, of of politics process to learn how democracy works and then um finally participation helps students from from the development perspective through the process creating a, a, a civic a, a identity where individuals can differentiate his or her views from from others through involvement in student government, um, students are able to realize society as a, so as a social construct of which they are, they are, they are valued participation. So according to me, it's, it's very important for, for young people to participate. It's very important for young people um, to vote. Um, let me end it here. In conclusion, I would like to say 
um, to my fellow students and, and young adults that um, registrations are, are still open. So I will, I would like to say they must go and, and register. Remember, people, we are voting for change and nothing changes if nothing changes. So again, your, your, your vote is a secret. So I will encourage um, young people to vote. Um, thank you. Thank you, thank you for the encouraging words. Uh, indeed, uh, we must go out and vote. Uh, you mentioned something in uh, passing. I was just asking myself whether does this is your wish or is something that you are advocating for? Because you said uh, last year in a presidential election uh, in South Africa, we don't have one. I think we are having a what we are having is a general election where we vote uh, for representatives for national and provincial uh, 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 representatives. So since you mentioned the, the presidential election, is this what uh, you are advocating for? And uh, will this actually improve uh, or enhance uh, youth participation in elections? Um, I was saying like um, in 2016, eh, I was referring to 2016, the, the, the presidential elections that um, our youth didn't, didn't really participate in, in voting that much. Um, it was only 19% that participated. So what I'm trying to say is that um, um, young people can can do better. Can can I encourage them to to vote and participate in elections? I um I, I, they can do much better. Okay, no, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, let's go to our uh, last panelist. Uh, let me give you the floor just to present to us the importance of voting. I'll also, touch on these important issues. What reforms do you think, looking beyond the general elections, what reforms do you think can be introduced that will encourage young people participating in uh, elections? Uh, thank you for the opportunity. You can touch that in conclusion. Yeah. Or in conclusion. Yeah, in your conclusion, you can touch uh, the question. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, firstly, I would like to say that uh, first, what is it that the government is doing to encourage students to register to vote for us? You know, we were having elections uh, not so long ago in our SRC elections. So uh, our government officials never came to us and assist us with resources. So we were suffering as students uh, for us to to, to encourage students to vote for us. So how can we come to the government now and say that uh, it is important for us to vote for students? So I think it is fair to do that. It's, it's really fair. It's not fair, sorry, it's not fair. So um, I think, uh, what you need, we need to focus. Uh, what the the youth uh, or student is focused on is finding jobs because of unemployment. You see, so uh, what happened uh, for me to be a student in TUT? Uh, to, for me to do a local government, it's because of my counselor. So I didn't know anything about uh, local government. You see, uh, because we we lack uh, knowledge. Uh, in 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 our neighborhood, and as we grow up in high school, it's not like when you're in high school, you know everything. You're not given much information about what is happening around your neighborhood. You see, so it's local uh, uh, local government election. So I want to talk about this. Uh, why I came about for me to be a student in TUT, and now I'm able to encourage other students to become. Uh, uh, to vote and become leaders. So, my my uh, my mother bought a house in Phosphorus in twenty. Uh, he 
she 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 bought the house and i didn't know about uh lock uh, the the counselor and that counselor uh, was having meetings now and then so i saw the transparency and uh the accountability to com uh, to community community members uh in my community so uh, that's why I, I I went to TUT and studied uh, local government. So people they don't know about IDP, they don't know about uh, bylaws. They just only see they just only want houses, uh, uh, the tarot to be fixed. So we, we lack knowledge in those things. So uh, I think uh, our government uh, officials are not doing anything for us. So yeah uh that's what i wanted to talk about and one of the things uh that makes students not to vote is because it's because of the corruption that is happening uh, right now as we speak so we've had we've had uh, uh that swane is broke right now that swane is broke right now so how can they how will they pay the the that their employees right now. So, you know what is happening in the local government? It's it's heartbreaking right now, and I need I, I think we need to to do something about this. And uh, I think students need to to raise their voice and be be heard about what is happening, and and for them to participate uh, in the uh, in the government. Uh, I think right now we just need to um, make uh, um, tell the government officials uh, to to just come to us and tell us uh, what we need to do in order for us to participate. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, th th thank you very much. You have raised uh, important questions. You have raised important uh, two, two points. Uh, that we need to deliberate further on. And when I'm looking on my charts, I was looking for questions. I see, I only see one contribution uh, from Dennis Reference uh, Mangope, indicating that it's important uh, for fellow young South Africans to be part of the decision-making process in our governance structures and hold those elected to account. Uh, when uh, we vote, we... Uh, take a responsibility to make our representatives to account and remember that as young people, we are uh, 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 dominant, particularly in Houten. So meaning that as young people, we have the power to can decide who becomes uh, the government of the day. So what Omangope uh, Odenis is saying is that we must uh, take the power as young people. And then he took about participating in decision-making processes. This doesn't limit us uh, to, to voting only. So as I've had uh, the four panelists who were uh, presenting, they also indicated to this. The first speaker alluded to people who are not even aware who their councillors are. What do you think is the cause of that? Don't you think it's because we are not participating in decision-making processes or democratic processes beyond elections? That's the reason we don't even know uh, 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 our councillors, let alone uh, voting for them. Because if we voted for them, obviously we'll know who we voted for. And then another issue that was mentioned by uh, one of the panelists is that there is a need for reform or for changes to be instituted that will encourage young people. And one of those changes he mentioned that uh, universities currently, I have seen uh, TUT as he mentioned, I've seen University of Limpop, I've seen Vez University, I've seen so many universities uh, doing uh, online elections. So are we thinking that e-voting is the future? 
And further, that, further to that, what other reforms can be instituted? Because uh, we have uh, an opportunity as young people to can participate on uh, the reform of our political system, especially the electoral, the electoral uh, systems, as the constitutional court has declared that it needs to be reformed so that we allow a direct election, voting for direct representatives, particularly in uh, provincial and national elections. So let me end it here and allow our panelists to just take a bite before I open up the floor for those who want to raise uh, additional questions from the audience. Uh, let's start with Ntate uh, Munisi as one of our panelists. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes, program director, doctor. Uh, I believe that it's, it's, it's very crucial that we reform um, the electoral, sorry, the, the, the way we are voting at this point. Because I've indicated that one of the reasons why, uh, I've indicated why, one of the reasons why students do not participate in the local government elections or, or elections on, in, 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 its, in its entirety. It's because of the long queues. Number one, we, we are living in, in a generation of two minutes. You know, uh, ARC, they say we are living uh, is ASAP, which means it simply means that as soon as possible. Therefore, you know, if you say that let's go and stand in long queues, they don't have that patience because there are so many factors that are contributing to them not having the patience. That's number one. And then how do you then convince someone who does not have patience and who does not have confidence and faith in the political structures to go and do and to go and stand in a long queue. Therefore, it will be easier then if we can just opt for the online um, elections. And I know there are some, um, you know, factors that might lead us not to, uh, that might need, lead us not to having the online elections being a successful uh, process. You know, rigging of votes. There, there are a lot of issues. But we are living in a digital world, a digital space. Let me emphasize that. We are living in a world where everything is happening online. If you don't move to that side, we are leaving other people behind, such as the young people, which they can just only vote um, through the, the tip of, you know, voting is, will be made easier because it will be in the tip of their hands, therefore of their, of, of their fingers. Therefore, it will, be, it will be easy for them to say, let me take my device and just vote instead of, you know, standing in the long queues. Therefore, this will also help to encourage young people to, to vote. That's my submission, program director. Now, now thank you very much. Uh, let's allow another panelist to contribute to that. The changes that you think uh, can be made that will encourage uh, young people to participate. One delay, you can continue. Hi. Um... I think since we've had uh, online elections here in TUT, uh, I think they, uh, the IEC can sit down with those ones who are uh, responsible for that uh, online election because it was very effective. And uh, this year we had uh, increased the number of voters. I think that would uh, at least... Um, at least uh, try to uh, encourage students to vote because we can't stand in the line uh, for voting. Thanks. Okay, let's allow the other two panelists to contribute as well. Do you think the face of representation in South Africa is encouraging for young people, the face of representation, the people who are representing us, are they encouraging us as young people to go and vote? I have seen uh, more recently uh, political parties encouraging uh, young people to participate, saying that we want them to be representatives uh, in uh, their local areas so that they can be able to stand as councillors. Do you think by having a young person standing as a councillor will encourage you as a student to go and vote for that young person? 
the other two panelists, yeah, you can start. Um, yeah, I think um, they, they, they encourage us a lot because nowadays we really want um, uh, um, young, 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 young people to lead. Um, they, they give us that, that thing, okay, um, as, as, We are losing you. We are lo losing you. Okay, let's allow uh, Zandile. You can also touch on the question on uh, the face of representation. Does okay. it, it encourages us as a young people to can participate? Or do we need young people as representatives in order for us to fully participate in elections? Um, I think in order for us to, us as young people and students to participate in elections, yes, we do need a fresh face, a fresh face being a young person. And if it's already the people who are in place, um, uh, I, I think they do not, um, sorry, encourage us to participate in, elections or anything politically related. And I think it's because of the way they address issues. Um, fine, they do address issues, I'll give them that, but they, they, they are not relevant to us. And I think it's also something that I under touched on that the issues that they address are not in our perspective. So for me, I think a reform that could be introduced to encourage the um, youth to participate in voting and other political uh, activities is that to address us as the youth in our perspective, not based on what they think is best for us. And I'll give an example, a practical example of this is in Finland, um, when architects are designing a playground for learners, so obviously that, that will be in a primary school. So when architects are designing a playground for learners in a primary school, we're talking people between the ages of six and probably 14 or 12 or 13, they ask the learners, what do you want? Mm -hmm. They don't think, no, I think this is best for the learners. They ask them, what do you want to have in the playground? What do you want to play with? What do you want to, what do you want to swing? What kind of swing do you want? Okay, fine. And obviously there are children, they won't put it exactly the way it should be. But with that, they get a perspective of what the learners actually want. So taking this back to um, politics and political leaders and the youth, Political leaders need to come to mm -hmm. our perspective and come to our level and ask us, what do you actually want? And even if we don't put it in the way that it has to be, it gives them a perspective that, okay, this is what we're working with. And so this is the direction that we should be headed. Even if it means that the president himself or herself in the future decides to create a conference or webinar or whatnot, addressing, not even addressing, but having a conversation with young people that what exactly do you want? Because then, I mean, if it's if it's the president himself or herself talking to us directly, it shows that this is really important and we are really important as the youth. And so our voice really does matter. And it's not just a phase or an illusion. And then that, that will bring in more faith in us. Um, sorry, that will bring in more faith in the political system and in voting. And it will make us as the youth want to actually participate. The second would be, the second reform I think that should be implemented is to make opportunities available so that we can actually, um, actively participate beyond voting. Um, and I think then it would start in high schools and primary schools, like having annual trips to parliament or parliamentary visits to, to schools or something of that sort, but just exposing the youth. Because at some point, the people in primary school, the people in high school will get to being a youth that is um, eligible to vote. So exposing them to that environment of government, of parliament and voting and everything that needs to be known from primary onto high school, by the time they get to university, they have an idea of what are they supposed to be looking out for if I say I, there's someone that I think I should vote for. If they're looking at a political party, this is what I want. So how can I tell them that this is how you must meet my needs? So the exposure to that, making those opportunities easily available and that information 
of governance, a common thing amongst the youth, is something that will help. Because students and the youth right now, we are commonly identified with things like alcohol, sex, drugs, rebellion, and so much more, because those are things that are easily available to us. And so those are things that we'll easily participate in. So if things that have to do with parliament or political things are easily made available to us, we will obviously participate in it. And so the youth will be identified with um, things that have to do with parliament. Mm -hmm. And it will make sense then that we will also be participating in that and also even think of maybe have the youth even think of being a president and starting their own political party at that young age if that information is easily available to us and yeah that's what i think thank you thank you very much you said a mouthful i think you have uh, touched a very important issue of making uh, uh issues of governance fashionable so that young people will be interested in participating in that. Yes, yes, exactly. Fashionable, yeah. Yeah, no, that's 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 very important. So it means uh, organizations such as the GPL uh, have a civic duty actually to do that, and they must uh, be doing that. And then uh, just to touch on some issues that I think uh, the panelists have touched, make especially relating to the barriers of entry for young people to participate in political parties. I have heard them touching them in passing. However, there were no emphasis on what are those barriers actually that uh, stop young people from participating or even joining political parties, for example. And then the other issue, it was the issue of opportunities, which was mentioned. Issue of opportunities was mentioned, more especially issues of uh, uh, civic or electoral education that should start from uh, the young age. With this one, I want to check what is the role of the media with regard to that? And do you think social media is a platform to enable young people uh, to participate in electoral processes, especially uh, elections? Anyone who wants to take this one can take it, and then we move forward. Then I open uh, time for our audience. Those who want to raise questions directly, you can able to raise your hands so that I note you. Panelists, you can you can respond to the two questions I've just raised. Let, let's start. Let's start. Let's start uh, with one delay. The rule. Let's start with one delay on the rule of uh, media. Do you think social media is a platform that can encourages uh, that can encourages young young people to participate? One delay. Yeah, I think we. Uh, it is important for 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 students to get. Uh, to be encouraged for them uh, to vote uh, through uh, social media because all now and then we all we always in the media uh, looking at beautiful ladies. Then when you scroll down, you see adverts. Then you see maybe a, a COVID nineteen. Uh, they explain about it on Facebook. Then you come to Twitter. They explain a lot, a, a whole lot. They can explain a whole lot there through advertisement. Uh, I think the 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 IEC can go through those platforms and even Instagram. They uh, it will encourage students and and I think they we must involve students in those advertisement so that uh, they can see that the youth is there and is visible for them to, to encourage them to vote. And uh, I think it's important for them. Thank you. No, no, thank you very much. Our audience, uh, you have a discourse, this important discourse on the uh, elections. So audience, you can just unmute and then uh, raise a question directly to the floor then one of our, audience, our four panelists can just attend to it, or we can also just attend to it in order to enrich this uh, uh, discourse. 
the floor is open. Uh, let me start with Ntate uh, Matlangu. Ntate Matlangu, are you there? Yes. Yes, yes I'm, I'm a take on the issues that have been raised and then you can raise comments or even questions okay. if you have one. Okay. Um, I'll start with um, the importance of civic and voter education. I think the youth apathy that we see today, it relies on that if we are able to give quality education at a young age, then more of these youth, when they arrive or be in the age where they're able to vote, they'll have a great understanding of why is it important to vote. Because without quality education, I don't think um, we, 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 we will be uh, not having this issue of um, youth are party. We need to build confidence and confidence takes time, meaning at the early age we need to build confidence to youth as to why is it important to participate. I heard one of the panelists was speaking of online voting. Um, as much as it's a great idea uh, that we, are, we, we can be able to vote um, anywhere where we we, 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 we can be on those days of elections. But I want to um, make reference on the past elections of this year, yes, more especially the SRC. You look at that, that could not even reach the quota while the, 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 the online, the, the, the doing their elections online. You look at UP, they had their elections uh, last week, but the voter participation was very, very, very low. Those things are based on, 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 on civic and voter education. If youth are aware of the importance of elections, if youth are conscientized about why is it important to vote, we are not going to face such challenges where institutions of higher learning, the, 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 the voter turnout is still low when we, we, we online. But again, if we are able to advertise elections, conscientize people, I mean, educate people, uh, I think we, 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 we might be uh, going somewhere. For an example, we had a voter registration um, on the 18th and 19th. That was our final voter registration, whereby we had more than 400,000 youth because of the new gadget uh, that we call VMD in the IEC, and also where we have the option where you can register yourself wherever you are, then I, I think the most important thing here is education. If youth are, are being educated, they are given quality education, and they are conscientized about elections. Because now we, we look at um, social issues uh, that are affecting us on daily basis, but then now, we don't question certain things. For an example, what happens if we don't vote? What happens that on the 1 of November, no one votes because no one uh, is satisfied with whatever that is happening in their country? And then how do we make sure, secondly, that we protect this democracy? These are, I think, on my side, are two uh, most important questions when it comes to elections, because democracy depends on participation. Democracy depends on us. The first thing that we have to look at before other issues is that what happens if we don't vote? This is our country. We are accountable for this country. We are given the constitution that gives, gives us the right to franchise. And what happens that everyone is tired and say, no, we're no longer going to vote. We need to make sure that we protect this democracy. We need to make sure that we protect this democracy that our forefathers fought for. That's the first bigger picture. Then others, then we can still engage them and look at channels as to how, how do we report the counselor? How do we report someone who doesn't do his job? How do we make sure that people are accountable to their job? Thank you. Thank you very much. I think you have already addressed one of the questions that has been asked here as well. I think it was asked by Nelisiwe Mabuza, uh, talking about uh, 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 enhancing or fostering uh, civic education through uh, uh, the departments, uh, such as a Department of Education, which I think is something that you have already touched 
which actually attracted the new uh, 400,000 young people that registered for the local uh, government elections. While the other audience are still thinking of uh, the questions to raise, let me allow uh, our panelist Umunisi, and then after that, uh, allow uh, Dr. Sitsedi to also have a take on what uh, the discussions that the panelists were having, on what is his view. Do you think uh, are we making progress in encouraging young people to uh, participate in local government elections? Uh, Munisi, I can see you on the floor. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Program Director. Um, l l l allow me, Program Director, to really emphasize, uh, you raised the question that, uh, what do we think about social media? Should should we use it? Should we use the platform to really uh, encourage young people to vote? And should we use it to educate the people? I believe that social media, it's one of the greatest platforms which can change the minds of the people. And if you check, can check very well, I'm not sure of the figures. I don't want to speak uh, false pertaining to the figures, but most of majority of the young people uh, in the social media space. Therefore, you know, some of these things that we do as young people, it's because of we're influenced by the social media. When you see the lifestyle, when you see the clothes that we wear, when you see the language that we speak, it is a social media. Therefore, if the government or the state, let me say the state, if the state can move its focus, shift its focus and put it to the social media, uh, with a focus of influencing the young people not to vote for a certain party, but to participate in the elections. That would be a great way. Because if you can check very well, there are so many platforms uh, which you can use in order to reach out to people in general. The, edu the education system, which has been touched by Mr. Matlam, and he has raised a valid point, a very profound point, that you need to conscientize the people from the young age, you know, so that when they grow up, they know exactly that I have a constitutional right of voting and no one should, should discourage me from doing that. And we have the educational system, you have the social media, um, you, you, you have politics, you, you, you have in, oh, television, obviously, falls under the, 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 the social media part. But I'm just saying in general, if you can use these fears, you will be able to at least attract the young people. And, and I advise also, I believe the, the IEC to do a study in term, uh, pertaining to the social media in terms of how they can influence the young people. And he said something about vets and other universities not reaching the quota. I think th this is based on how much the students are politically conscious. Come to TUT, we, the percentage was around percentage of the students who participated who voted was around 49.7.7 percent you know therefore it simply means almost 50 percent of the of the students participated in the blind elections therefore this is based on the the, inf, the, the how much these students are are conscientized about this thing therefore you cannot introduce something without conscientizing the people before you can introduce it conscientize them so that whenever they take a, a decision they are taking it based on a, con a, a conscious, they are taking a conscious decision. And whenever, if they are taking risk, they are taking calculated risk pertaining to voting for, for, for a certain party. Therefore, thank, thank, you, thank you very yes. much. Thank you very much. I think you have said you have said a mouthful to respond to the question on social media. Uh, another question that I see on the platform again, it's about uh, 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 checking whether is the ground uh, fertile to empower young women into local government leadership positions. Are young women inspired to participate in uh, politics? I'll allow uh, our two panelists who are women uh, to respond to this. One of them can just take on the question to respond on this. And then from then, let me allow Dr. Sitsedi as well just to uh, contribute. The panelists, yeah can continue okay i think young women are allowed everyone is allowed basically because and i'm, I'm making it general i know i'm diverting from the, from the focus of the question but i'm going to generalize and say everyone is allowed and given an opportunity to participate and be a, a, a representative of 
some form of political thing um because i, I don't want to make it a gender thing because then it's going to seem like uh, males infringe on the rights of women and think that they cannot rule and whatnot because then helen zilla would not have survived till the time that she has and even other public speakers sorry government speakers who represent um political parties in government who are female they would not have been allowed to represent if females were not given an opportunity so i don't think that females are not allowed or not given or the ground is not fertile the ground is fertile um i think then the question is are the challenges more yes as as females we for some reason face more challenges in getting into a space where it's ideally men but the ground is fertile and it's just a matter of being expectant of the challenges and i think, I think it's yeah. very i think it's very clear i think it's very clear thank you thank you thank you very much I see another question which actually talks about the issue of accountability in which uh, the panelists have touched on. And then the question uh, is about uh, uh, how do we hold uh, our councillors accountable? The question is why is uh, precisely saying, why don't we have uh, crafted KPAs, uh, deliverables, deadlines for councillors, uh, quarterly so that we can hold them accountable on a quarterly basis? And then uh, why don't we have ways of ensuring that uh, councillors are personally liable for lack of service deliveries in our uh, 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 communities? Uh, before I allow our panelists to touch on this, let me allow Dr. Sitedi, just give you a minute. If you are there, because I heard you have a network problem. No, I think Dr. Steele is still having a network problem. So our panelists, you can touch on these two questions. Just uh, one minute. Any of our panelists? Holding our councillors accountable. You, okay. Uh, my my hand is is up from director. Can I come in? Yeah, yes, you can continue. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, program director, it, it's very important number one for councillors or leaders to be accountable. Number one to the voters or to the people who voted for them. Therefore, it will be best, you know, especially it's best when councillors they live, you know, in the same community as us. Uh, so that whenever the, the time for accountability comes, we know that the councillor won't run away. He's here with us. Therefore, I think it would be better for councillors to give, you know, at least every after six months, just a report to say, remember, this is what we said we will do. This is the progress, progress status. You check the progress status. These are the threats that we have. These are the strengths that we have. These are the weaknesses. Therefore, let's gather together and see how we can solve these issues. I try to engage with the mayor. I try to engage with, with the provincial people. And then this is what I got. I try to get sponsors. You know, you, you create that platform, that relationship, so that when you sit down together, you are able to, to reach out to your people. Remember, as a leader, these are your people, you are leading them. You must be accountable to them. They must ask you questions and, and you must give them feedback. This thing of councillors running away from us is problematic because obviously that's when we will come and strike to the house of the councillor and march to say you need to come out because you have running away from us. Councillors must be visible to the people which whom, in fact, to the people who, who have voted for them. So for accountability is very important. Let's do that each and every after six months. And the five-year term will be wonderful and excellent program director. No, thank, thank you very much. I think you have mentioned important uh, questions of accountability moving away from populism, which I think is something that is raised also by uh, Mr. Tlanganan Ngoveni, which say he encourages uh, participation because we are responsible for the quality of our uh, local government. Our elected representatives should be accountable to us. Elections provide us with an opportunity to choose the representatives whom we want to fulfill this important role on our behalf. So it's up to us to demand high standard. Therefore, it requires careful and informed choice. So meaning that as the people as well who are uh, given the power to elect, we should try to move away from populism 
and elect capable representatives who are sure that they will be accountable and deliver to the promises that they've made. So this is what uh, Ms. Tengoveni uh, is raising. Then uh, Mr. Tengoveni, just to uh, follow up, and uh, Mr. Fezidin Dawana as well, both of you, uh, do we think as a GPL, as a civic organization, does it or is it doing enough to actually encourage uh, young people to participate in elections? You can respond. I'm giving you one minute, both of you, to respond. Mr. Ngoveni and Mr. Fezile. Yeah, it seems like we uh, we 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 are losing them. The connection is bad. Uh, with with that with that, I think we have reached uh, the end of our um, uh, uh, session because it's already two minutes to twelve now. So I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, everyone who has uh, participated in this session. I can see that the two hours that we had uh, is not enough or was not enough in a way. So we needed more. And in future, we should take this session to a face-to-face -face, uh, platform so that we can able to see each other while we are uh, uh, discussing. And then with that, uh, I think the discussions that we had were fruitful. And then uh, we need to take them forward in future and look beyond the elections on how are we going to encourage uh, our young people, in particular students, to participate in the democratic uh, processes and hold the elected representatives accountable. So you may allow me to agend this uh, session. Uh, the session is uh, agent, even though I was not happy with our audience for not raising uh, questions. Hope they did benefit as much as I have benefited from this discourse. Thank you very much. The session is agent and thank you to our panelists as well as the contributors from uh, TUT who welcomed us, as well as uh, the people who have arranged uh, these sessions, we have made this session a success. Thank you very much. Our panelists, I thank you. I just wanted to hear your voice for the last time. Panelists. Uh, thank you. Thank, yeah. you. thank, thank you. you very much. Thank, this, yeah, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, program director. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, colleagues. Thank you. Siabo. Thank you. Thank you. And Thank that you. was you you directed the program so so uh, smoothly. Thank you so much. So smoothly. I learned I, I learned this uh, art from your lecturer uh uh with Dr. With Dr. Ndo, Levin Do. Yeah, I work with I work with Levin Do, I work with Levin Do, the public management. Oh, okay. <laughs> and he's my <laughs> politics teacher, actually, for journalism. Oh, okay, no, I work with him very well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. No, thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you to the organizers for trusting me with this uh, ship. <laughs>